my mate, Mountain Goat Dave, in the Maverick Explorer number one, all kitted up and uh, ready to go. Up there. Bye guys and girls, it's Pete Mind Wise Man's channel, AK Maverick Outdoors, and we're out on a Saturday. A uh, lovely sunny day and we're going to wild can somewhere on the Thames and uh, bash out for about 24 hours. So, let's get on the move. So here we are, we're out on the waters. Dave Mountain Goat <laughs> is round behind me. Looking like an oh. expert. <laughs> <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> In the uh, Maverick Explorer Mark 1. Nice one mate, that's it, you got it. While I'm in the main event, Mark II, but we're making our way over there. Oh, brilliant day to be out on the waters. Busy, a busy Saturday, sunny Saturday. So there's quite a lot of activity going on the waters. There's Dave just hanging around waiting for these boats just to go by. You can see a nice blue sky, a few clouds. We've got a fresh breeze coming through this little... Okay, so we paddled down the wider stretch of the Thames and arrived at this little bit of riverbank. I've unloaded my canoe and uh, Dave is he's just waiting to come in and uh, moor up. So he's just going to paddle in here in a moment and repeat the same as what I've just done. And then just going to shoot the canoe in, or reverse of shoot, and then just drag it in there. There he is. Ready to come and spend the night on the Thames while camping in the woods. Okay, a nice little pleasure boat going by. Dave's just getting some firewood ready. Gonna have our fire pit just down there. So we're near to where we've set up our bashers. So I've got a lean-to with my favorite little addition. Just the center line pulled out so you've got sort of sitting area rather than actually being at an angle. Plain old, um, just over a metre by two metres long ground sheet, that's basic. Lightweight, just packs away really easy. Fold stool, seen this before, but I've got a uh, folding sit kneeling mat just to go on the top, just sort of pad that little bit out, so that's fine. And then Dave just set up over here, a nice little contraption, bungee corded across his DPM basher. Sleep system and his kit, and he's got a basher pole just there as you can see on one corner and then also on that corner just keeping the back end up a little bit wood so we're thinking of just having the fire pit just there so we don't actually get smoked out right where the bashes are and we don't need it for heat sort of late night warmth and light we just want it near to where we're set up so it's convenient to take any of the food and then just sit around the campfire just here I've actually stashed some wood uh, up to standing wood, also I say standing upright so it stays dry, but in this weather I mean even if it was wet it would have dried out quite easily. So, but I need to get this thing on the go. My old faithful two burner stove and uh, unpack some of that bag, there's all the food stuff in there, clothing sleep kit in the dry bag and then just an extra bag there with a change of clothing. I've uh, changed my vest because I got all hot and sweaty, just had a wet wipes. So I've just douched myself over with a couple of them, just to sort of freshen up and then put a clean vest on. So uh, I need now to sort of consume some food. Okay, so we've just had a sit down, chat and a brew for a couple of hours, chewing the cud. It's coming up to about half eight, quarter to nine. We had a brew on the old two burner stove. A few bits and pieces left over here. We just dug a little fire pit. You can see the little recess area. We're gonna have the grid there to put the kebabs and then the main fire there, and then sort of scoop the um, coals underneath. Got a load of fire, which uh, Dave's kindly sort of prepping a bit. A few bits down there, a few bits we're finding dry, even though it's actually flat on the floor, on the ground. It's not wet, as it normally would be in uh, wetter seasonal conditions. But we've got plenty of wood there, and that's the stuff that I actually stashed in a secret place from previously being here. So, all good stuff. Okay, there's the remnants of half the wood, well, over half the wood we've got left over. Got the fire going. There's going to be plenty of nice big coals in there to eventually grill some of the kebabs. But I'll just take you over to where we got some of the scoff. 
There's some of the veg that I prepped at home. Peppers, sweet peas, or should I say sugar snap peas, carrot, red pepper, onion, uh, lots of different mixture of spices. But that's actually going to go on these kebabs, which are shop bought, just convenient really. Put them in the freezer. Some of you have followed my films before, videos before, will have known that I put it in the freezer. So by the time it's ready to use, it hasn't uh, perished. But they're going to go on top of this on the recess of the fire. And then we've got a bit of carbohydrate to mix. But you'd have seen in the previous video, when we did the uh, prepper meat, is the MSR, which is going to be a nice big size to easily cook on the campfire coals the fresh veg. Bit of dessert just there. Some long life peaches in those little plastic tubs. Then there's two tins. The one on top with a white and red label is tinned cream and the one underneath that is mandarin. So that's gonna be our dessert for later on as well. And maybe a bit later on, bit of midnight supper, there's some jacket potatoes in that plastic bag for a bit of late night feast if we get a bit peckish as well. So bring it on. Okay, here we go. Got that cooking away, getting steamed out, but there's the veg cooking on the coals for the main part of the campfire. And there's the beef, sweet chilli beef kebabs, near enough cooked. And there's one angry face over there who's gagging for something to eat. <laughs> yeah, get on it. The moon's a funny shape tonight. That's the LED lantern that's attached to the tree. A bit of bungee that's around the tree that's fixing. Dave's um, top of his tarp. Oh, we're just sitting down. Ready to have some scoff. Mix some rice with the veg. It's really nice, as you saw in the still picture of the uh, ingredients. But right, I'm going to get that down my throat now. Yummy. So I'll just put my new kettle, which is going to be used in place of my zebra billy can. It's just under two litres, sorry, just under three litres rather. Could have heated it up over the two burner stove, but we just wanted to go a little bit more. Sort of that bushcrafty nomad feel, tripod over the fire. Dave's just got some nice little incidental music in the background on his phone. I think he called it sort of like Zen music, which is really nice and uh, tranquil. Just that mesmerizing feel and look of the campfire and some water ready to boil up in the kettle to make a nice cup of tea. What, on the Spotify, on the phone? Yeah, or wherever. Sometimes I listen to it on, um, on YouTube as well. Right. Yeah. right. There's some great ones. Was well, it all sort of like relaxed in incidental music or something? Yeah, you just type in what you want, mate, and it'll come up with it. You want rock music, and just come up with it. So right. Just type in Zen music or, or Gregorian chant music. And mm. It just comes up with something. It's, it's so much on there. I just want to play you now. It's a guy called Dan Gibson. It's really good. What a Gregorian thing. Yeah. Right. He plays all sorts of music. Relaxing.
Got a bit of acoustics in there, on it? Yeah. <laughs> Outdoorsy speaker. Yeah. Don't need any batteries. There you go, that's going to be a first. Going to start a craze now, mate, and you started it. Dave Mountain Goat. What you do is you get your phone, Spotify, whatever it is, playing music, and it just sort of vibrates. Through the BCB mug. Or any other canteen drinking mug you care to use. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw it first here. <laughs> Bushcrafty madness, I don't know. So there's the moon just about shining through the brow of the trees and uh, giving us a bit of natural light. I'm just going to go into the darkness of my basher. Two o'clock in the morning, Dave crashed out about half hour ago. So I'm just gonna get my head down. That it's gonna be really nice and comfortable. On my full length mattress. Pillow, I've just gotta straighten that up, resting on top of a dry bag with a few bits and pieces just to raise my head level. So I'm gonna get my head down. So I'm now laying down on my mat that you just saw. So basically, over my shorts. Still got my shoes on, just loosen the laces so I have, to, I have to get up quick during the night for whatever reason. My shoes are on, got softy trousers on. And then just over my vest and a uh, lightweight shirt zip effect of the softy jacket and my arm holding the torch <laughs> but now I'm underneath the tarp now I'm gonna have a kip so see you in the morning morning it's now Sunday the 24th of July 2016 and uh, eventually settled last night and I had a good night's sleep it's one of the quietest nights out on riverbank camping that I can remember I was saying to Dave you know expect to be woken up by a load of gaggling geese all fighting over territory sort of a, as uh, dawn breaks and ducks quacking and but it was really quiet there was no breeze in the trees it's say it's one of the quietest um, Sleepful nights I can remember. Is that again? Well, for me, you're snoring. <laughs> I heard a little splutter coming from you, though, the odd sort of. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the odd little. No, no, <laughs> yeah. don't, no. Stop touching my mum, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave's just doing a bit of admin, tidying up his sleep kit which I'll actually do in a little while. But as I said before, I settled last night, I had my softy kit on with a full length mat that uh, I've just started using recently. It's a bit thicker than the um, Army Issue one. As you can see, it's about 30 millimeters, which is a good sort of, I don't know, 10 millimeters, a bit thicker. But it's sort of been a bit longer. I'm not bothered about the feet. There's a remainder of our fire pit. We eventually used the old um, three litre kettle with a bale arm that I improvised and modified on, made out of a skewer. 
So it's really nice to actually use that over the fire. Could have put it on the uh, two burner stove. Yeah, so it was nice to go rustic with that over the campfire, made a brew. Plus as well, add some hot water left over, which is another good purpose of using it to uh, sort of clean out our um, eating utensils and what have you. So dual, pop, dual purpose. And then within view, but obviously safely out of the way from the fire. And just so that we had a lot of um, sort of admin space on our pitch. Two canoes just set up there on their edges, uh, which uh, were there overnight. Anyway, let's get this day on the go. We've been using the RAV Power Lantern to charge the phone. That was down to about 40%. So I'm just using that. I'll get two charges out of that, as I've mentioned before. So that's part of the procedure of the start of the day, kicking off. And um, let's see what we got in that bag there to make some breakfast. The two burner stove, which I'll get back out. I normally put stuff under the shelter, so if there is any sort of unpredictable weather change, I like to put my stuff under the shelter, or at least sort of covered, so if there was um, any unpredictable weather change of conditions where if we did get a heavy downpour of rain, especially in humid conditions, you know, although it might be forecast, it's going to be dry, something might change, the low pressure comes in and it'll absolutely pour down with rain. Just out of habit and precursor for that, I always just like to at least have the majority of my stuff at least sort of under the tarp as best as possible so that if we did get any unpredictable change of weather conditions then I'm not waking up in the morning with important stuff soaking wet. So what I'm going to do now is uh, tidy up my sleep space just uh, deflate the mat a little bit and then fold it in half but then have it as a bit of a knee pad and sit rest without it being too inflated where it could get damaged but I can still use it and have a bit of comfort while I'm pouring around ready to make something to eat. So I've got a cooker ready set up, Dave's having a little walk about, stretching his legs, greasing up the old joints, getting a bit limbered up, and we've got even more to grease up the old joints. <laughs> a bit of oil that was in the pan, got some mushrooms, got these turkey, pork, smoked sausage, long life, don't need them in the fridge, and got some wraps, two of those little units with eggs, so we've got four eggs, and it's all going to be cooked up in there to make a bread wrap, but I just got some of this recently it's Guinness sauce sort of with a base tomato type sauce but really strong and rich it's like a sort of mild barbecue sauce but tastes of Guinness and that is absolutely fantastic so we'll have a squirt of that in our bread wraps little pleasure boat going by there people enjoying the waters whilst we tuck into our scoff Dave's already downed half of his and his mess tin the old uh, bread wraps and there it is, ready to go down my throat. So we're now ready to sort of pack up. I'm going to strike down camp and um, we're going to go for a paddle, sort of go upstream. So when we come back, it's going to be sort of the flow taking it. So that was home for 24 hours. Some of the kit packed up. There was a fire pit, which we've LNT'd, leave no trace. Filled it back in as well, you can see. And Dave's on sentry duty, just taking in the vibes of the water before we load up the canoes and uh, get out on the waters. Okay, so we've been paddling for about an hour. Um, we've come upstream against a bit of breeze, which was quite sort of forceful. And um, it wasn't the current wasn't that strong, it's just the breeze where the uh, river got wider. But uh, we've just paddle in this little offshoot there's a weir further up there but well, we're just going to pull into a bank and uh, have a little snack and then paddle back to where we put in with the stream Okay, so we've double parked the canoes. Dave's just sitting in the one that I've been paddling so he can rearrange his bracing foot position. You can sort of see where his rucksack is to the right of his hand. And uh, he's just pushed the two burner stove just a bit further in front so when he pushes his feet against it, it's just easier to sort of paddle. We came up here, went down there a little bit. Just sitting on this little bit of bank. And we just add some long life peaches 
carb up a bit and I'm just eating some mandarins. So yeah. Yeah, all good stuff, just chilling. A bit sort of overcast, but the clouds quite high, so um, the pressure's high, so I don't think it's going to rain. There was a little bit of spray rain earlier, but nothing to sort of write home about, so. Weeping willows and white willows, amongst the assortment of trees. So now we're ready to go back onto the main stream and we're actually going downstream now onto the main flow of the current. We just took a little tributary backwater, sat in the bank and had that little snack and uh, now ready to make our way back down there. So we're now coming downstream. Wee, breeze is broadside of me. <laughs> you can see I'm not paddling on broadside. It's moving me. <laughs> Take a break from the paddle. Dave's gone on ahead. So we've got a big broad section here now going downstream of the old dark. So I think I need to get my old paddling arms on now. One added paddle just to realign. And then off we go as Dave goes off into the distance. Stop checking to see if your hairs are right. <laughs> yeah, it's this breeze keeps blowing it out. I'll keep combing it, but... Is it? Was it a launch or a yeah. small one? Yeah. Yeah, it's all. It gets a bit of a flow, but it's more letting the flow take you, but then using the blade as a rudder. Yeah, I had a bit of deja vu when we went there as well. Did you? Did you? <laughs> Was that a spicy version or barbecue? I heard you were coming. <laughs> I'm so glad Dave didn't hear that. <laughs> okay, we've come back to put in, and uh, Dave's just having the last bit of riverside fresh air. Ready to mount the old canoes on that uh, old barbecue frame I found in a discard in the car park. I sort of took that. It's coming really handy because I lay the two canoes that flat, one on top of the other, then bungee them, and um, Bob's your uncle. So anyway, just going to finish off this vid now in this little bit of uh, wild camp, me and Dave, duo canoeing, 
So thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon. Cheers, take care. Quick, let's get in a car before it rains. Quit anticipating the change. Wanna get through this, let go of the blame. So many right ways, rules might look strange. We'll never backtrack, do it twice is the same. It came and it went, no need to get bent on illusions of what this all could have meant.